So welcome to another video that probably not a lot of people are going to watch, but it's okay. So I have here my 2001 Honda Insight, and today we're going to be putting in this guy. So what I have here is a grid charger from RB Batteries, and the reason that I'm putting this in is I've been having a little bit of issues with my IMA battery that tends to come from the imbalancing within the cells. So this is going to help basically equalize the balance within the battery pack again um, and kind of prevent me from having to replace the battery pack and just prolong the health of the existing battery pack that's in the car. You could basically replace your battery pack with a new one, but um, I'm in Canada. Most of the aftermarket battery options are down in the States, so factoring in shipping, etc. It starts to add up quite a bit. I think it's around $2,000 off the top of my head, which is almost what I paid for the car. So this is a fairly cheap option. I think I paid like $150 for this um, to get it shipped here. Um, and it's pretty simple to install. Really all we're gonna need is a pair of pliers. Um, I just have my toolbox here, but I believe the main thing is gonna be a 10 mil and any other hardware that you're gonna need to disconnect your 12 volt battery. And this is optional, but just good to have a multimeter just to check the voltage across the battery um, when we get into the install itself. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is just pop open your hood and get to your 12 volt battery. So that's this guy here. And you're just going to want to disconnect. Um, I believe it says the positive terminal um, according to the instructions, but I'm just going to disconnect both sides just to make sure that we actually have no voltage coming from the actual 12 volt battery. And again, this is gonna depend on kind of what hardware you have set up for your car. I believe most of it, it's gonna be a 10 mil, but just take this off accordingly. Okay, so now we're at the back of the car. So this is obviously with the rear hatch open. We're gonna want to remove the rear carpeting. Um, I think basically the easiest way is just to pull up, like so starting from the back where you have the bulkhead just behind the front seats. This should actually pop up like so on either side and there will be clips like as you can see one side is already broken here for me the other side is still clipped in so we'll just kind of make sure to pry that up just like that and then we can go ahead and just pull the rest of the carpeting out because i think it's all held in by velcro so after removing the carpet the next thing you'll have is your cubby bin here uh, this should just come out fairly easily it might be held on velcro on either side but you can just remove that and it should just get out of the way Okay, so now with all that carpeting removed, we can go ahead and go to the next step, which is this little section here on the center of the battery cover. This is held in by two 10 millimeter bolts, so we're gonna go ahead and remove those. So with those two 10 millimeter bolts removed, you can take off the cover. And as you can see here, there's basically a switch. This is essentially the kill switch for the battery itself. There's this red connect, or not connector, but more of a clip here to prevent it from being uh, moved accidentally. So we're gonna get this removed. It's currently in the on position. You'll see there's a little word off here. Um, we're gonna remove that clip and then we're gonna switch it to the off and then place the clip back on so we can't reconnect the battery by accident. So as you can see, now I have the switch in the reverse position, so now it's on the off. Um, I found the easiest way to get this tab off was actually just to use a flathead screwdriver and kind of just pry it up. Uh, mine was pretty stuck on there. I don't think it's ever been touched, but uh, I think on some other cars, if it's a lot easier to get off, you should just be able to grab on the switch itself and just pull up and that cover should pop off just like that. Let's keep this back on. So now what we're gonna do is get the rest of the cover off and the cover is this big metal section piece um, so what I've seen is that you're gonna want to remove anything that's preventing it from getting off so there's this plate here on the passenger side of the car uh, mine it looks like it has 10 millimeter bolt here another 10 millimeter bolt hidden behind the trim here and then a couple of these plastic clips that are just held on with uh, Phillips heads uh, hardware so we're going to remove that and then we're just going to go around and basically remove um, all the bolts that hold this and I believe there's a few bolts that are just hidden underneath this trim piece uh, so you don't have to take off all of these again looks like some of these have plastic clips so we're just going to use a um, trim removal tool just to pop some of these clips out of the way um, try not to break those if we can and then we're going to basically free this guy here and all the hardware that's holding it down should be 10 millimeters so you don't have to use any other tools to get this on. Okay so as you can see got a ton of bolts here but the one that I hadn't seen mentioned anywhere before was just next to the switch 
Um, you can see there's a screw hole there and it's held on with this little discreet looking black bolt. Um, that it's pretty tough to get anything onto there so I just use a set of pliers to, to grab onto it and loosen that. But with that out and then everything in the back removed, holding that cover down, again, quite a lot of bolts, um, I got to where I'm here now. The other thing that I noticed that was different from what I had seen was the outer edge. So there's these three here and then these three here. They were actually held on by Torx uh, bit hardware. I think they were like Torx 30 size. Um, everything else was 10 mil, but those are Torx. So I'm not 100% sure if that's what it comes with the factory just to kind of prevent people from getting into this space. There's a lot of warning stickers on the cover itself saying this shouldn't be customer serviced, etc. But um, yeah, I'm not actually 100% sure if it comes from the factory that way or my car is unique because it had it before. But yeah, with that cover off, you can see we have access to what we're gonna need. Uh, there's these few foam pieces which hopefully shouldn't get too much in the way. I think this uh, left hand one we might have to remove just to get access to, to some of the wiring that we need to install. Uh, but the next thing that we're gonna do is just disconnect the positive and negative uh, terminals for the battery itself. Those I believe should be a 10 millimeter. So we can just double check that right now. Yep, so those are 10 millimeters. So we'll just disconnect those and move them out of the way. Okay, so now we have the positive and negative terminals removed on the battery itself. We're also gonna remove the gray connector that you see here in the middle, um, just to disconnect the system too. So let's go ahead and do that right now. This little tab here at the top, just depress that and it should pull up, just like so. Okay, now looking below where the terminals are, you'll see this white box there. And there's two connectors, one at the front, towards the front of the car, one at the back. We're gonna go ahead and remove the connector that's towards the front of the car. Um, there's a little tab that you press down to slide that off. Okay, so it's kind of tough to tell, but the connector's off. There's a little tab that you have to press down, but it's pretty tight in here, so I actually um, used my finger to press down that tab and then use a screwdriver to uh, pry the connector off. But now that we have that off, we can go ahead and install the wiring harness for the grid charger. Okay, so again, a little bit tough to see. I'll try to point with my finger, but that's the wiring harness. So it's labeled um, IMA positive. So that's gonna connect to where we had the spade connector initially removed. And there's a piggyback off of there. So you can plug in the original connector going into there. And then also the other wire is this negative um, that I've just gone ahead and connected to the negative terminal and reconnected the positive terminal as well too. So we're all done on the IMA side. And now the only other thing that we need to wire in is the fan. Okay, now in regards to the fan, there's the wiring for the fan just off the right side here. There's a protective sheath, so you're gonna wanna go ahead and cut that back, um, but be careful that you're not cutting into the actual wires for the fan itself. And there's two wires here, one's blue and one's black. The black is gonna be our negative, and then our blue is gonna be our positive. And then on the wiring harness itself for the actual uh, grid charger, we have, again, labeled fan negative, fan positive, so the red is gonna go to the blue, and the black is gonna go to the black, and we're gonna use the provided crimp connectors that they have. So as you can see, we have the fan running right now, all the wiring connected, and they have the harness plugged into the actual grid charger itself, just to make sure that everything's functioning as it should. Um, according to the instructions, you should be able to hear the fan turn on the moment you have this uh, grid charger on. So it looks like everything's working and should be good to go. So we'll go ahead and kind of tidy things up. We're just gonna use the supplied zip ties to route some of the wires away from the fan. Um, and I've gone ahead and kind of tucked the harness underneath uh, the battery tray. So I'll probably see where I can put this uh, grid charger. I've read some people kind of put it on the side here or on the side here. So we'll kind of play around with where that's gonna be located. But yeah, um, so we'll go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so I've kind of go, gone ahead, zip tied a section here, zip tied a section here, just to make sure the wiring's free of the fan. Um, went ahead and replaced the foam piece. I don't think I actually touched on this before. Um, so in my car, it has these two foam pieces here. 
I removed the left hand side one just to be able to get access to where the harness actually plugs into the IMA system. So re-put that on now. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and basically reinstall the cover and kind of do everything in reverse. Um, and then I'm going to see kind of where the final place that I can rest this guy will be. I have basically everything reinstalled into the car. Um, what I've basically done for now is just route the wiring, um, the harness, into the cubby bin. And I just have the grid charger there. So I figured it'd be, be better there um, instead of kind of flopping around inside the trunk or anything like that. So I was just going to have it here, um, have it unplugged, only plug it in when I'm using it. I did order uh, the separate, basically, uh, discharger as well too, which is, it connects to the same exact wiring harness, um, but basically instead of charging it, it's going to actually pull all the charge off the battery um, just to discharge it that way, just using some incandescent bulbs. So um, that one, I probably won't keep within the car. I think I'll just do that um, kind of on a somewhat regular basis just to make sure that the battery's um, in good health. But yeah, uh, re overall relatively straightforward and not too difficult of an install. Uh, just I think getting all the bolts for the main battery cover is probably the biggest pain. But other than that, it actually went pretty well. Um, so hopefully that helps you out if you're ever doing this to your Honda Insight. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I think it's going to be a very small portion of people that are actually going to find this video useful. Yeah, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below um, and catch you in the next video.